in this video, we are going to give you our top 10 tips that we have learned over the last four years of RV life. Now, these tips are great for both the new RVer and the seasoned RVer alike. So regardless of where you are in your RV journey, you're going to want to see this. We are Charity, Ben, Dakota, and Trinity. We decided we didn't want to wait for a life of adventure. So in 2017, we bought our first RV and set off to live a life of travel in the USA. We've visited over 38 states in three years and have many more to go. Follow along to learn all the best places to see, RV and travel tips, and much more. So before we get started, we want to say a huge thank you to all of you that have jumped in and decided to support us on Patreon. Your support really helps to free us up to keep making these videos and bring them to you week in and week out. And we really couldn't do it without your support. So a huge thank you. We also want to let you know that we're going to be starting some really fun giveaways over the summer exclusively to our Patreon members. So if you haven't joined the fun over there, you can check that out at gratefulglamper.com forward slash Patreon, and we'll put a link below as well. Now, those of you that have been living RV life for more than a week probably have some sort of story about something that went wrong or something that probably could have been prevented with a little bit of knowledge and forethought. So you'll have to drop a comment below right now and let us know about those stories because we know there's plenty out there and let's face it, all of these types of comments on these videos help the RV community to learn more and be more educated. We found that learning from the mistakes of others definitely beats having to learn in the school of hard knocks yourself. So let's start digging into some of these tips right away and hopefully you'll take something away from this video that just helps you in RV life going forward. And if you do, please make sure you hit that subscribe button and give us a thumbs up. So oh, tip number one for number two. <laughs> this was something we did not realize and we thankfully figured it out before we had to learn the hard way. And that is while you're set up at a campsite, keep your black tank closed. In fact, your black tank should always be closed all of the time unless you're actively emptying it. <laughs> so we didn't realize that that was the thing and we just thought once you're hooked up to sewer you can leave both of your valves open and you don't want to do that you can and will end up with a poop pyramid not fun times so because the majority of what goes into that black tank are liquids keep the valve closed it will help to make sure that when you do empty it everything that's in there comes out and you're not left with anything behind that's going to cause unpleasant odors or any other sort of unpleasantness. So tip number two, use protection. And we're not talking about this type of protection or any other type of protection that might be coming to mind at the moment. But when you're set up at a campsite, you want to protect your RV. So two things that you need to protect your rig, a surge protector to protect from any sort of electrical issues at that pedestal that you plug into and a water pressure regulator, which will protect your rig from any spikes in water pressure or water pressure that's just too high that can cause problems on the inside. So we'll leave links below for both the surge protector and the water pressure regulator that we use. And you can also see more about those particular items and some of our favorite other must have accessories in the video up above. So tip number three, have a pair of gloves handy in the compartment where you disconnect and connect your sewer hose. Kind of gross to think about handling the poo pipe with bare hands. Just do yourself a favor and either get some disposable gloves or gloves that you know are for that specific purpose and keep them where you keep all of your stuff for your sewer connections. So tip number four, do not count on campground Wi-Fi. It's not going to serve you. <laughs> so we learned very early on, we need to just plan on bringing our own Wi-Fi devices with us. So we'll put a link above for the video that we've recently done on mobile internet, what we use, kind of 
what we feel like works best and won't cost you an arm and a leg. But just take it from us. Don't count on the fact that the campground Wi-Fi is going to really be helpful for anything. Tip number five, make sure you bring those awnings in if you leave the campground or leave your rig. Do not count on the rain sensor or the wind sensor to bring them in automatically. We've had so many times where we've seen windstorms come out of absolutely nowhere and take out awnings before the wind sensors even really tripped. And same with rain. So if you're gonna leave the campground for the day, just bring those awnings in before that you leave and you know you won't ever come home to a collapsed, folded in, blown off awning. Tip number six, familiarize yourself with your rig specific owner's manual and know where your fuses are located and how to check them. We have paid some major stupid tax twice now in our time of RVing by spending the money to call an RV person out or actually take our rig into an RV repair facility to find out it was a blown fuse. So familiarize yourself with that owner's manual, know where your fuse junction block is. There's usually more than one if you have a drivable rig. So just get to know where those are and before that you call that RV repair guy or if you have a problem, check your fuses first. Tip number seven, walk around your RV before you leave that particular campsite. And you should also kind of just give a quick overview of the campsite before you pull into. Note where there's maybe any trees or picnic tables or large rocks that could be a potential hazard when parking. And before you pull out, do a walk around. Make sure that you didn't accidentally leave it hooked up to the electricity or that you don't still have one of the leveling jacks that did not retract or anything or trash or any left behind items that you may be missing the next time that you pull into a campsite. Do yourself a favor, do a quick walk around before that you pull out. And then again, after you pull out, make sure that you didn't leave anything behind. Tip number eight. If you have an RV with an onboard generator, or even if you own an auxiliary generator, you want to run it every two to four weeks with a load on it. Now, this just helps keep your generator in good condition. It helps to make sure that everything that's inside of that generator is staying lubricated. All of the moving parts are in good working order. There's nothing worse than being in a situation like boondocking or lot docking overnight going to flip on that generator so that you can recharge batteries or have power to make a pot of coffee the next morning only to find out something's wrong and it's not working correctly. So especially even if you're parked at an RV park, run your generator every so often with a load to keep it in good condition and to avoid having to troubleshoot on the fly. Tip number nine, use checklists. There are so many different checklists that are out there for so many different purposes. We have a great packing checklist on packing up that RV and you can find that at gratefulglamper.com forward slash checklist and we'll put a link below. But there's checklists for maintenance, there's pre-departure checklists, there's setup checklists. Do yourself a favor, avail yourself of resources out there in the form of checklists to be able to just go through everything and that will help to make sure that you didn't miss a crucial step in the process of going through RV life. So our final tip, tip number 10, which is probably one of the most important tips, and that is don't forget the maintenance. Now there's lots of different maintenance that RVs need depending upon what type of RV, but things that need to happen on a weekly basis, a monthly basis, semi-annual basis. One of the biggest problems that people end up with with RVs are water leaks. And these are something that can be very easily prevented 
with the right preventative maintenance. So make sure that every once in a while you're getting up on that roof and you're checking it out. Make sure that you haven't maybe snagged a hole in your roof with a branch or something that maybe you just weren't aware of, didn't see. Check all of the seals that go around things like the vent covers and the shower skylight. Those seals around those areas do need to be replaced from time to time, depending upon things like humidity and how much sun that they've been exposed to, they deteriorate and they crack and they need to be resealed. Don't forget the maintenance on your RV and you'll have enjoyment out of it for many, many years to come. Let us know in the comments below, what are your top tips for RV life and RV living? We love to be able to help others out in the RV community and your feedback in the comments below help us to do just that and help us learn from each other to avoid any crucial mistakes. So make sure that you drop a comment below with some of your top tips as well. If you'd like to see more videos with other RV tips, tricks, organization perhaps, you can check those out right over here. And if you would like to see more videos with places to travel and fun places that you want to go see while you're living RV life, you can check those out right over here. Until next time, we will see you on the road.